Our pre-window forecast had Chelsea staring down the barrel of a shortfall of 118 million. Now, even after a flurry of June business, that could still see Chelsea short 6 million of hitting their PSR targets. Exactly, it's difficult now, you know, to accept. Last week, we explored the rise of Premier League swap deals as clubs scrambled to boost profits before the financial year end. Now that the PSR deadline day has passed, let's revisit the four teams in question and see how much business they conducted, and more importantly, will it be enough to meet profit and sustainability regulations? So let's dive straight in, starting with Chelsea. We already saw the Ian Martson deal agreed with Aston Villa, generating at least 35 million, all going to the bottom line. On top of that, Amari Hutchinson left Ipswich for 20 million, but with Arsenal's 15% sell-on clause, Chelsea will net just 17. Those two deals boosted Chelsea's bottom line by 52 million. But is it enough? Previously, we estimated Chelsea needed to deliver 36.5 million in PSR profit for 2024. Our pre-window forecast had Chelsea staring down the barrel of a shortfall of 118 million. Now, even after a flurry of June business, that could still see Chelsea short 66 million of hitting their PSR targets. However, we have limited insight into other areas of the club. Could there be property sales like last year or other financial manoeuvres? The club seems relaxed about PSR compliance, so we'll have to wait until they submit their results at the end of the year. Exactly, it's difficult now, you know, to accept. Next up, Newcastle United. Newcastle's deadline day was frantic, with big names like Alexander Izak and Anthony Gordon linked to moves that didn't materialise. However, they did complete some significant deals. Academy starter Ellie Anderson did move on the 30th of June, generating 35 million. Jan Kuba Minte, previously linked with a PSR swap deal himself with Everton in exchange for Dominic Calvert Lewin, instead departed to Brighton for 33 million. After accounting for his 5 million remaining book value, he was signed for 6 million just a year ago. That adds a further 28 million to the bottom line. Off the pitch, Newcastle also cashed in on Dan Ashworth's drawn out move to Manchester United. Compensation hasn't been reported, and Newcastle were alleged to be holding out for 20 million, but given the timing of the deal and the deadline, we we're assuming seven. These three deals boosted Newcastle's bottom line by 70 million. Will that be enough? Based on the two previous years, Newcastle needed to generate 11 million in profits. Our previous forecast showed Newcastle needing just 35 million in sales, thanks to the benefits of Champions League football. Adding in the 70 million of June business seems more than sufficient, suggesting our assumptions were too optimistic or Newcastle over-delivered due to deal uncertainties. In our view, Newcastle looks safe for FY24. So yes, of course, we hope to use this as a springboard to get back to our very best levels consistently. Moving on to Aston Villa. We had covered Tim Arogbenen's swap with Everton's Lewis Dobbin, banking Villa 9 million in profit. We also saw Romari Kellyman go to Chelsea as part of the Martson swap, netting a further 19 million. Morgan Sanson was sold for roughly three, but given Villa paid 16 million for him three years ago, that's unlikely to deliver any profit. The biggest was left for last. Douglas Louise sold to Juventus in a continental swap, with two players heading to Villa in exchange. Villa's June transfer business also delivered 70 million in additional income. We estimated Villa needed to restrict PSR losses to 40 million in 2024, and were short before the window opened. The June deals, though, appear to have bridged this gap, securing Villa's PSR compliance. Yes, of course, we are very happy. And lastly, we move on to Everton. We already had the aforementioned Lewis Dobbin swap to Villa banking the Toffees 9 million. Everton also cashed in on Ben Godfrey, selling to Atlanta for 10 million. However, the Toffees bought Godfrey for double that back in 2020, meaning Everton only banked 5 million in profit after factoring in his remaining asset value. In Everton's deep dive, we estimated the Toffees could only afford a 38 million PSR loss in 2024, and at the start of June, were 11 million short. Factoring in these two deals might just get Everton over the line, but they provide little wiggle room if their dispute with the Premier League over capitalised interest costs goes against them. You know, I'm not really one for crying in. It's, it's done. So in summary, Chelsea and Everton still have questions looming, 
Newcastle and Villa appear to have made it, but we won't know for certain for a few months. Stick with Football Finance News for the latest updates on these developing stories 